Eamon Khan here, four seconds out with Eddie Hearn in person. Good to see you back from America, back to being Eddie Hearn. Um, back to Gill versus Barrett too. Um, talk me through this card we talked about at the start of the year. I wanted to do the whole grade in the card ahead on paper and then an execution. So talk me through the card, what, what grade would you give it? Um, eight, eight and a half, something like that. Are we doing it ten? Out of ten? No, letters. Oh, letters. Okay. Um, B plus. I think I was disappointed to lose Cameron Vong against Jordan Flynn because then I think we would have had a really, really competitive card. Um, but I think it's a good card. I mean, it's a brilliant world-level domestic matchup between Jordan Gill and Zelfa Barrett. You've got a big world championship unification in a great fight. Brandon Dixon fighting for the world title as well. Um, I love Kane Baker against Gomez to open us up for the English title. Loads of really good young fighters on the card. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm very intrigued by the main event because I think Really, no one can actually hand on heart pick confidently in that fight. And that's when you know you've got a great 50-50. What are the options on for the winner? Um, plenty. I mean, obviously, Joe Caldina is there, but looking for the big fights. There is a chance you may see Joe move to 135 at some point. Nunes is the mandatory. So the winner of this fight could fight Nunes for the world championship. Um, you've got Oscar Valdez, just won a world title. I think, you know, from a profile perspective, they're going to put himself right in line. And if you lose you're really not in a great position at all. You've made some moves and positions yourself and you've uh, secured Duran Ennis to match you in mm. boxing. Um, great signing on paper. In terms of the fights there, I believe that Crowley will be next um, for him. But what other fights are you looking for to yeah, put on for Ennis? Possibly. I mean, he's the mandatory and he has to make a mandatory defence next. So I think it's a good time for Duran because a lot of the bigger names that not wouldn't be afraid to fight him, but just know how good he is and the reward might not be there yet have moved to 54. So guys like Stanionis and Barros, I think they're available to, to make those unification fights, just a case of money. Um, but just want to make him active. I mean, I've never seen a response like it from the signing of, of a fighter. He's over the moon and we just want to keep him active and take him home to Philadelphia. We wind a couple of weeks back and it seemed like from Frank Smith's words that maybe the signing of Ennis wasn't on the table. So what, what changed in that period of time? Maybe we we're just tricking you. Um, I've been trying to sign Jerron Ennis for five years, if truth be told. I watched him. I said, this kid is a pound for pound great. And it took him, and um, we got him as a world champion. So it worked out all right, but just pleased to finally get his signature and, and chuffed that he's decided to uh, sign with Matram. Getting on to yesterday, Tyson Fury held a press conference ahead of the fight with Alexander Usyk and Tyson in his own way answered a question as to whether he was keeping an eye on Anti Joshua. Um, he said, look, hey, he's not my boyfriend or anything, but you know, I'm concentrating on my own business. But with AJ's resurgence, should he be keeping one eye on, on, on that not fight really. for the fight in the future? Really. Oh, the fight in the future. But, you know, I don't think AJ's looking out for Tyson Fury. They just know that a fight is probably inevitable between them and you know, Fury's got business to take care of on May the 18th. Um, whether AJ's there or not, I'm sure he'll be a, a, an interested spectator. And hopefully one day we can make that fight happen. Joe Parker's observing from social media and he's putting out the call outs, put one out to White, now he's putting out, out to Joshua. Is that a viable fight whilst uh, Joshua's waiting for the picture to clear? Uh, probably not, because I think AJ's going to fight for the world title or the undisputed. Um, but he does love the Joseph Parker rematch. You know, AJ wants to fight all those guys. He wants to fight Wilder. You know, he wants to fight Joseph Parker again. And obviously he wants to fight Fury and Usyk. So um, I don't think that will happen next or the one after. But I wouldn't be surprised if, if that fight happened before AJ hangs him up. You've made the signing of John Ennis. Could you be likely to be closing in on Anthony Yard as a signing? No. No. I mean... Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not sure he is a contractually free agent, but bearing in mind our relationship with Queensbury, um, I'm not interested in um, pursuing him anyway. But as I understand it, he's not a contractually free agent, but not for us. A couple of years back, you wouldn't have factored in the Queensbury relationship and maybe you'd have gone for these signings. Mm -hmm. is, is that you putting that as the priority right now because of you know the fights well, that can I mean, be made? I mean, contractually... It might not even be possible. But yeah, obviously things change, relationships change. And I'm not looking to rock the boat with Queensbury right now. I'm, you know, I'm sure that there'll be situations in the future where a Queensbury fighter does become a free agent and a matron fighter becomes a free agent. And 
there's nothing that stops us talking to those fighters, but it doesn't sit right with me now. And contractually, I'm not even sure of the position. Haven't spoken to Anthony Yard or his team. And as I said, we're going to step back from that one and, you know, um, continue our fruitful relationship with our promotional partners at Queensbury. Speaking of relationships, uh, Carl Froch has had to say on uh, Frank Warren and uh, Turkey Al Sheikh um, holding hands. And uh, um, from my perspective, I know that's a cultural thing there, but Carl doesn't seem to be on board with, you know, all the partnerships and getting together and working together. What do you, what do you make of that? Yeah, I think Carl's job right now is to be controversial for his channel. I think his channel's a, a very uh, entertaining watch and he seems to be having a back and forward with Frank at the moment. Stay out of that one. Um, but we're all enjoying the partnership. And as I said earlier in an interview, you know, Carl says, oh, the, you know, money, money. Yeah, I mean, as a business, of course, you're going to be looking for opportunities for your fighters and yourself and the, the business. But all I can tell you is we're genuinely enjoying the experience of working in Saudi Arabia and with His Excellency. It's refreshing. Um, it's invigorating. Um, it's fruitful. And long may it continue. Last couple of things I did quickly. Um, I've seen that. Mike Tyson and Jake Paul are going to be applying to the Texan Commission to make this exhibition a formal fight. What do you think about that? Uh, I mean, if it's, I don't really know the difference. I mean, one sits on your record, one doesn't. Does it really matter? You know, fight's a fight. I don't think it would be fought any differently if it was an exhibition or a licence fight. And then finally, uh, I thought the door was closed on uh, Thomas Howard's meeting, but you sort of slightly opened it in an IFL interview with Joe Pugh. You said, look, if he apologised for the anti-Joshua article, Maybe you'd consider it. Is is that right? That? Yeah. I was, I was surprised. Did I? Must have been a weak moment. I'd still rather roller skate down a razor blade using my balls as brakes and falling into a bowl of TCP. I thought that would be the response. Eddie, much appreciated. Thanks for being so good.